Hi, welcome to Half-Baked Media. I'm Half, and today we are looking over the top five most overrated bands. First up on our list is the Red Hot Chili Peppers. You like a few of their songs, I like a few of their songs. Everybody does. Nothing wrong with that. But they have not aged well at all. Every time I hear Under the Bridge now, I just want to go under a bridge and do what he's doing under his bridge. Smack. You miserable little smackhead, get the hell out! Yeah, no, this song is about shooting heroin. And, uh, I remember being in a pizza place once. The song came on the radio, and, uh, people at the next table started singing it. It's the song that everybody chooses to show how unique and special their voice is, when their voices are actually about as unique and special as, a, a star tattoo? Oh, sorry, that came out wrong. I didn't mean it. I meant about as unique and special as a star tattoo or a music note tattoo. Yes, feed me comments. You guys are gonna butcher me, especially when we're through this list. Half of the time, people don't know what a song's about. Did you know La Cucaracha is about weed? Or at least one verse of it is. Uh, the cockroach, the cockroach, now he can't go traveling because he doesn't have, because he lacks, marijuana to smoke. Now we can all relate to that, but I learned this from Looney Tunes. Yeah, I've heard it in a million cartoons and other things. People think it's the Mexican national anthem, for God's sake. So there you have it. Number five, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Number four on our list is a favorite of pseudo-hippies and conspiritualist soccer moms everywhere, The Doors. Yes, if you ever hear The Doors playing and you don't smell essential oils or incense, you probably should get your nose checked. Can't you smell it? No, Sam. I can't. Back when The Beatles, The Beach Boys, and Jethro Tull were big, you had little Jim Morrison back there in their shadow, the Justin Bieber of that era, off in a little closet in a drug-induced mania writing sh poetry. I mean, it was pretty neat having Carl McLaughlin play the organ, but the lyrics just weren't good. Washing down peyote buttons with a fifth of whiskey and calling yourself the Lizard King does not make you cool. And what's with that? Usually when a musician takes drugs, they get better. And towards the end, he was such a drunken mess. Go listen to 5 to 1, you can tell he's drunk. He loses time, and the band has to correct him on it. <laughs> yeah, together, one more time. Then he just freezes, and the band starts to get together. And then he just starts screaming the lyrics to, you know, save the song or whatever. But I see through you, Jim Morrison. I see through you. Number three on our list is Evanescence. Now, the definition of the word evanescence in the Cambridge Dictionary is the condition of lasting for only a short time, then disappearing quickly, and being forgotten. So it's actually a very fitting name for their band. Ugh, I cringe just thinking about Kathy Lee wailing into the microphone about wake me up inside, wake me up when the song's over. And this song's like under the bridge for emo gothic Americans. Is that, is that what they're called now? Can I say that? They all want to sing it to show off how unique and special their voice is. They twitch their nose up, wrinkle their eyebrows, and sing it through their nasal passage. You know what I'm talking about. And I'm just going to make a prediction here. Someone's going to not agree with this, and they're going to post in the comments, This song literally saved my life. Because someone says that about every song if you scroll down far enough in the comments. And I get that. I was in a car accident once, and Hey Jude pulled me from the wreckage before the vehicle exploded. And for the record, the Beatles are not overrated, but if you're gonna play Evanescence, hit me over the head so I can't wake up. Coming in number two on our list is Leonard Skinner. Yes, from asking little girls to come up to their hotel room for champagne to sweet potato pie shutting your mouth, nothing spells trashy quite like Leonard Skinner, with a few exceptions. See, look at this. He looks like Nick Offerman and Grumpy Cat had a baby and then wore a Kid Rock wig. And what's this? Why is Danny Trejo here? And what's the deal here? An American flag with a Confederate flag? Look, your heritage is either the Confederacy or your heritage is America who beat the Confederacy. This is like putting a Star of David on a swastika. It just doesn't make sense. They're incompatible. And the music, my god, the music about free-range poultry. I feel like he wrote most of his songs to serenade his sister, and I'm sure his cousin mama liked it, but it's, it's just god-awful. 
I think this southern man's retirement is long overdue. That's it for number two, and before we get to number one, I'd like to throw out a couple of honorable mentions, which... It was so hard to narrow down this list. You got so many overrated bands, from Sublime to that woman who sings like a dog. You know the one. Who will... Now, I feel like Kanye West isn't worth mentioning, even before all this current stuff. I've hated him since he claimed to be the voice of a generation. I hated him even more after he jumped up on the stage while Taylor Swift was winning an award and started talking about how Beyonce should have won it instead. But that brings us to our first honorable mention, Taylor Swift, a horrible lyricist. Like that song from the Coke commercials where everybody was singing it, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22. What does that even mean? Like 22 isn't a landmark birthday, it doesn't mean you can buy alcohol for the first time. What does it mean? And then there's the other song, Look What You Made Me Do, Look What You Made Me Do, Look What You Made Me Do. It sounds like an anthem for abusive partners. Look what you made me do. Look what you made me do. You smoke one brand of cigarettes from now on, because if I ever see two different brands of cigarettes in any ashtray in this house again, I'm going to snap your neck like a twig. The second honorable mention is the band Tame Impala. They're okay. Just okay. And here we are at number one on our list. Can you guess it? Can you guess it? Journey. My god, one of their most popular songs boils down to Na 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 na, you got cheated on. <laughs> and Don't Stop Believing is one of the most overplayed atrocities to ever hit the airwaves. I mean, for God's sake, I once heard it at a Chinese buffet. I'm not kidding. At one point, it was the number one most purchased song on iTunes, and that's even with the existence of Down the Dog by Griffin, G-R-Y-P-H-O-N. Check it out, it's a good song. Well, musical piece. I'll link it in the description. And the vocals are just terrible. I don't know where people got the idea that this guy could sing, but it was probably from the same place that people got the idea for Jenkum. And really, I think I'd rather try Jenkum than, uh, you know, ever hearing another Journey song again, so keep that wheel in the sky rolling away from me. Thank you. So that's it for today's top five list. If you have an idea for a future one, please leave it in the comments. And animations on my end, they're going slow, but they will be coming out. I'm working on a little side project before I get back into Fruity Fables. And if you haven't already, don't smash the like or subscribe buttons because you'll crack your screen. But you can totally click them, or tap them, or, you know, use whatever your device is to help out the channel. And hopefully I'll see you here again on Half-Baked Media.